What I want you to do uh, in this homework assignment is the basic balancing of flavors, okay? And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be working with a Greek salad, but a Greek salad as a concept. So let's talk about the Greek salad here for a second, and let's talk about the actual tr traditional salad, uh, and we'll kind of incorporate these two um, I ideas together. All right, so first of all, uh, in Greece, there's no such thing as a Greek salad, right? It, it's basically uh, what they would refer to as a farmer's salad, and they take the freshest vegetables they have, toss them in some good olive oil after they chop them up, a little bit of feta cheese for some fat, and then any number of other ingredients, maybe a little bit of oregano, sometimes a little bit of lemon juice for their acid, okay? Um, and that's how I like to make uh, my Greek salad. Uh, I'm not a big fan of salad greens in a Greek salad. I think it kind of takes away from it. Also, too, the salad greens uh, tend to get kind of soggy. Now, what this exercise is going to do is it's going to allow you to uh, practice a couple of things that are really important, some fundamental skills. So we're starting from the base, and we're going to start building you up, okay? So when I make my Greek salad and in, in a traditional Greek salad, a lot of times you will julienne the vegetables. And to get a nice, even julienne of vegetables, it's really important for you to have good, solid knife skills, right? So the professional pinch grip on your knife, uh, not holding it like a hammer, right? And using your guide hand technique. So for those of you who actually uh, need a little bit of a review on this, go ahead and head on over to stellaculinary.com slash CKS. And that stands for culinary knife skills. And I place them in the order in which uh, you should you know, watch them, right? So how to secure your cutting board, how to hold a chef's knife. So this is your professional pinch grip, all right? And then how to use your guide hand. So these are re the real important um, aspects that you want to be paying attention to when you're going through and cutting your vegetables for your Greek salad. So what you want to do is you want to take your vegetables, you want to slice them up, and I want you to really focus on your julienne technique and your professional knife grip, right? Your pinch grip, your claw grip, right? Having the claw hand guiding your knife, the, edge, the side of your knife is always in contact uh, with your uh, first uh, knuckle on either your uh, index finger or I like to use my middle finger because my longest finger, right? So, and I want you to really focus on getting that motion down. The better you are at your basic prep techniques, the faster you're able to be able to execute, right? And so if I can chop an onion faster than you, if I can chop a cucumber faster than you, if I can butcher a chicken faster than you, that means I have more time in my day to do more prep, which means I can prepare for more complex dishes, so if you want to actually be able to execute more complex dishes, you got to start from the basics and you got to get your prep skills down. You got to get your efficiency down. Having speedy knife skills is one of the, the fastest ways to get there, right? By having that good guide hand technique, by having the good grip. All right, so you're going to take your vegetables, cucumbers, onions, uh, bell peppers, uh, whatever other hard vegetables that you want, and you're going to do a nice thin julienne on them, right? And this is just step one. This is just option number one, okay? Because I want you to view this more as a, as a concept. Now that you have your vegetables in this bowl, let's talk about our, our flavor structure. The process or the steps in which you add uh, the seasonings to your ingredients uh, are going to affect how that salad actually eats. So for me, the first thing I like to do is in that bowl, I actually like to add my feta cheese. And this can be, you know, anything that you want. You can leave the cheese out completely. But the reason why I like to add my feta cheese first, even before my olive oil, is during that mixing process, once I add the olive oil, the feta cheese breaks down a little bit uh, into the olive oil and acts as a coating, right? So it's almost taking uh, that olive oil and it's thinning it out uh, into a, a coating-like uh, sauce, for lack of a better term. Now, in a traditional uh, salad dressing, right, when you're actually dressing a salad in a traditional manner, right, but what you're doing is you're just basically adding your greens to the bowl, right, and you always add your oil first because that oil basically creates a, a nice even coating on the, on the leaves. And then you're using the rest of your ingredients to actually season. So here I'm just using a normal, uh, you know, mescaline mix, right, or a field greens mix, and... Uh, here I'm just using some hazelnut oil, right? 
And again, that's a, a that's a flavor structured decision. Okay, the actual active ingredient. What we're doing is we're cutting our we're coating our greens with oil here, but once they're evenly coated, the actual oil that you choose can be anything you want. So it can be olive oil, it could be hazelnut oil. So here I'm seasoning with acid, which is a Moscato, you know, Moscato vinegar. But this, again, it could be lemon juice, it could be sherry vinegar, it can be anything you want. Now I'm seasoning, right? Now we know that we need salt, but here I'm using Flirtacel because the Flirtacel has that nice little crunch, nice little pop of texture. And then I have my, uh, my cracked black pepper. And then from here, you just put it on a plate and you're garnishing with ingredients. I throw in some candy nuts. I throw in, uh, you know, a, a few other things. And um, that's your basic salad dressing, right? That's how you dress a, a salad in a in a basic sense. So the same thing holds true well, with your Greek salad, okay? What you want to do is you want to start by dressing the the uh, vegetables with your feta and with your olive oil, and you want to add enough of that good olive oil or whatever other oil you want to evenly coat those vegetables. Now, what do we know about fat? Well, fat will actually coat your palate, okay, and it will uh, deaden some flavor. So you need some brightness there. So how do we cut through fat? Well, there's a couple of ways to cut through. The number one way is acid, and you should always use acid in almost every single dish that you create right? There's always going to need to be a little bit of acid, whether it's a touch of lemon juice or uh, vinegar. And there's always going to be some exceptions to this. But for the most part, you should always be thinking, uh, you know, people think salt and pepper, right? Salt is a seasoning, pepper is a flavoring. Really what you should be thinking is salt and acid, salt and acid, right? Because those are the two things that are really going to brighten up your dishes. So after you coat your vegetables, uh, with this olive oil or whatever oil you choose, you want to then sprinkle in some acid. And again, you're not making like a two to one or a three to one traditional vinaigrette. You're taking that acid, you're splashing it in to cut through the fat. So what I want you to do is when you dress your vegetables, first taste the vegetables raw. Okay. Take a bite of your bell pepper, take a bite of your cucumber, take a bite of your tomato, whatever it is that you're throwing in there. And then I want you to dress them with some oil. Take another bite. Notice the difference. Notice how that oil will sort of deaden the flavor, but also bring some roundness to it, right? And that's why the oil is there in the first place, because also with fat, we know that there's uh, quite a few of the complex flavors that we taste are actually based from aroma, right? You have the basic sensations that you get on your palate, but a lot of the actual complexity of your flavor comes from your olfactory system, right? Your actual, your sense of smell. Most of those volatile aroma molecules are only fat soluble. So if you have a dish completely devoid of fat, you're going to be losing out on some flavor. So you add in some fat to your, ve to your vegetables, which have almost no fat or really none, right? And then you want to rebalance that fat. You want to bring back that brightness with some acid. So again, traditionally, a little squeeze of lemon juice will do the trick, right? A little sprinkle of uh, sherry vinegar, if you like it. Moscato, I like Moscato vinegar, whatever vinegar you like, right? So now you have that fat and acid balance. Now taste again, right? Again, a little sprinkle, a couple of drops, mix, taste, a couple more drops, mix, taste, right? It shouldn't taste overly sour. You should see that brightness coming back. Now, if you add too much vinegar, meaning that it's too sour, right? Cool. Great job. Good learning lesson, right? As we talked about in the past, you have to base it, you, you can't be uh, scared of failure. Really what you want to be looking for when you're uh, dressing your food is you're going to have to sometimes push that envelope too far. You're going to have to know what it tastes like when you not only under salt a dish, but over salt a dish, when you add too much salt, when you add too much vinegar, when you add too much oil, right? But to kind of keep you in the guidelines, it's your julienne vegetables dressed with your oil, a little shake a shake of some vinegar, and that's going to brighten everything up. Now, once you taste that those vegetables again in each stage and you're tasting that brightness, you want to go ahead and sprinkle in some salt. All right, uh, Flirtacel is great here because it's a cold application. So you could use a finishing salt because once you break that salt down, right, once you drop it into, you know, hot water, it just becomes sodium chloride, right? The re reason why you pay the premium uh, for Flirtacel or Malden sea salt or different salts with different crystal structures is because of the actual textural component and how that, how that changes your dish. 
So if you have a finishing salt, use it. If not, you know, a good sprinkle of kosher salt will be fine. You can use some cracked black pepper if you want a little bit of a, a peppery taste. And then from there, kind of add what you want. Now, this is a really good base for you to not only drill your knife skills, all right, but also to practice your base flavor structure of balancing fat, acid, and salt, right? All, that will always be there, okay? From there, you can then say, well, okay, now that I understand this concept, what's keeping me from taking this exact same concept uh, and maybe instead of cutting them julienne, uh, cross-cutting that julienne into a dice, right? And now I take that and I uh, dress it with some olive oil or whatever uh, fat that you want, hit it with some vinegar or whatever acid that you want, and now you have something that resembles more like a salsa or a chutney, right? And let's not get too far in the weeds of the technical terms of, well, a salsa is really this and a chutney is really this, okay? What we're talking about is the same basic conceptual approach, right, where you have your, your now your diced vegetables that you dress, you create that flavor structure on top, and then you put it maybe as a sauce, right? And so, so now, so let's say I take my Greek salad, I make it, and I pan roast a chicken or I pan roast salmon, okay? So this is going to be part of your actual homework assignment is adding a protein of choice, right, to kind of get you in that mind frame of, of cooking a, a, a quick lean protein and executing a, basically a, a, a salad with a protein, which is going to be great coming up here uh, in, in the spring and summer months. Right, But then you can take that concept further because now you understand this basic concept. And now to drill your actual knife skills, right? instead of drilling uh, your julienne, let's go ahead and drill your dice. So go back through, and now you want to dice your veg. Okay? You want to uh, cross-cut whatever it is. Right, uh, your, uh, you, know, you can practice your onion dice, which is a separate technique from your bell pepper dice, and so on and so forth. Take that, you dress it. Okay, now maybe I'm leaning a little more uh, Asian style, right? So I'm going to add in a little bit of sesame oil, and maybe I throw in a little uh, thwack of some XO sauce, and that gives me that nice sort of fishy chewiness. And then I'm going to balance that with a little bit of uh, you know black vinegar or, or something, right? So you can see how you can you know just quickly lean into different directions by changing up the actual ingredients that you're putting in here, right? Uh, you could dice. You could start dicing up some fruit, right? So the same concept. Maybe you take some pineapple and some mango and uh, a little bit of tomato. You seed the tomato. You dice everything up. You seed and uh, and skin a cucumber. Dice that up. Now you have sort of this fresh sort of pineapple mango salsa, right? That's following the exact same concept of the Greek salad concept. Right, where you're taking your vegetables or you're taking your fruits, you're dicing them up, and then you're going through that flavor structure pattern of, and it's really important to to do the steps correctly, right? Fat first because you want to get that coating, you want to add that fat, you want to get that flavor from it, right? That roundness that sits on your palate. Next, you want to cut that fat, you want to bring that brightness back, so you want to add in a little bit of acid. Finally a little touch of salt, and then from there, you can go crazy. You can finish with herbs. You can finish with some pepper, and sometimes we'll taste something in a kitchen. Uh, you know, a, a chef or a cook will bring me something and say, uh, hey, wh what does this soup need? Does it need salt? Does it need acid? Does it need some more fat? And sometimes the answer is, well, it kind of needs more of everything, right? Like the whole thing is just, it's balanced, but it's flat. It's like listening to, uh, you know, a well-produced song, but just your radio is kind of turned down, right? You don't need to bring the drums up. You don't need to bring the uh, the, the banjo up or whatever. You got to bring the entire track up, right? So you just got to crank up the music. So sometimes you go back through that entire cycle where it's like, okay, it's just, it's all tasting a little bit flat, but it's well balanced, right? So let's add some more fat, add some more acid, add some more salt. So for your homework assignment, at the, at the very base, if you're um, you know, feeling uninspired as far as ingredient choice, look up a Greek salad uh, and, and list the ingredients, which uh, are, are basically just some hard, crunchy vegetables that don't need to be uh, blanched, and then go through that seasoning process. Then I want you to add a protein on top, and then for a bonus, you could add some sort of sauce, but really you don't need a sauce because the protein or the, uh, the olive oil and the vegetables uh, that you dressed 
right, will also work as a, a sauce. It'll bring moisture uh, to that dish. So one of my favorite things to add on top of my Greek salad is a pan-roasted chicken breast, uh, pan-roasted salmon, or uh, grilled shrimp or sautéed shrimp. Now, if you go to stellacorner.com slash CT, that's stellacorner.com slash CT, that stands for cooking technique. Uh, that's where I keep all my cooking technique videos. We do have a video there on pan roasting a, a chicken breast and pan roasting salmon. I don't have one on shrimp, but shrimp is pretty easy. Nice thing about shrimp is it has a built-in timer, right? Throw it on the grill, throw it on the pan. Uh, when the shrimp is uh, pink on both sides, you're just ready to go, right? Pink and firm, and, uh, and you're all set. Right now, if you want to push the envelope with that, uh, you can then take this concept of dicing your vegetables, julienning your vegetables, doing a very fine shave julienne, and then creating a garnish with that. And then maybe you have a separate underlier. Now, I'm not going to go too far into that because I don't want to overly influence the more advanced students uh, if they want to play along at home. However, uh, this weekend, I will be uh, shooting video on this and I will be getting a video out to the main channel, uh, by next week. So while you guys are working on your homework assignment, I will also be doing my version of the homework assignment. 